is our 50th year. We can keep... <laughs> yeah. We keep basically on the same mission. My colleagues, there's 12 of us who are directors, have been managing the organization for many, many years. Our focus is on advancing GIS and this science that supports you. This last year, we grew another 10%, so we're very strong and, and getting stronger, actually. Our focus is on engineering and science, a science-based technology. And this is our organizational chart. It's not exactly an organizational chart, but it focuses on the big buckets of how we're organized within the organization. And you can see from that chart the ones that are perhaps most relevant or the couple that are most relevant to support you. Beyond the core mission of supporting you, we also, at the same time, work on a couple of specific missions in advancing spatial literacy, advancing geographic science, working on conservation projects around the world with our partners, and also in education. And us together with you have intention about collaborating in not only your mission, but other, other missions that make a difference. A lot of our work is also spent on professional development. There are teams of people that support you with training, online courses, lifelong learning exercises, and books, one of my favorite topics. There's over 100 now publications around our technology, including these. Some of them are brand new. I'll call your attention to ArcGIS Pro. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, get that book. <laughs> or uh, imagery, or human geography, or WebGIS, or an old friend of ours, Martin O'Malley from Maryland, is part publishing a new book called Smarter Government. We spend a lot of time thinking about how can we help you learn in a continuous way. And some of those sessions are with big exercises like MOOCs, but increasingly you'll see snippets of learning in learn lessons that are really traveling actually with the product. ESRI is strong, but while we're a billion dollar company, we have several thousand partners who represent about $20 billion of work around our core product. And many of them are here. And I want to say thank you to our partners because like ourselves, they're very committed to your success. They're being entrepreneurial, little companies, startups, and large anchors like IBM and Microsoft have worked with us closely over many years. We also enjoy a series of special relationships. People like NatureServe or the Nature Conservancy or Jane Goodall, or the National Geographic Society. Particularly, the National Geographic Society is pioneering education and conservation on the planet on many fronts. This year, we're launching a new effort, and I'm very pleased to announce it for the very first time. Some of you know E.O. Wilson. Any of you know E.O. Wilson? Amazing guy, world's leading biologist. He wrote a book a couple years ago called Half Earth. This, this is a vision of being able to conserve the rich biodiverse areas that are left. He calls it half of the earth. And the question is, which half? And like nature serves activities of identifying hotspots in America, he has a team working at Yale, which ESRI has agreed to fund and sponsor with a massive earth science project to be able to map all the biodiversity areas for the planet. This, in, this information, thank you. This, this will take us five years. It's gonna involve some of the leading earth science and data science people on the planet, but that information will become all available to you and the rest of the world for, for driving a better future. In the world of education, we continue to push hard on K through 12 programs. Between September of last year and December, over 3.4 million kids took lessons with ArcGIS Online. This is in the United States only. This is building another generation of people who are 
people who are young people who are spatially literate. And I want to say thanks to many of you here in the room, educators, but also just GIS professionals who volunteered to be geo mentors to take these young people underhand and teach them what you, what you know, and, uh, and it makes a huge difference. Look, um, as I started off, our nation is facing many challenges, some of them very sobering. And your work, a fresh light, a fresh face, applying GIS, what you're already doing, my sense of it, and I, I travel a lot, I see a lot, my sense of it is you're making a huge difference, both within your organization, but also collaboratively working together to build a better future. The challenge is integrating this work, and this is less technical now than it is sociological and psychological and political, um, collaborating and sharing and creating this kind of infrastructure vision. This vision will interconnect not only the content, but also interconnect processes and information and workflow. This is what I think we need. We need more understanding, <laughs> don't we? More collaboration to address these gigantic problems. Transforming our own individual work in our agencies and creating a kind of GIS at scale. It's the same concepts that you love, the idea of integration and collaboration on your workstation or in your agency, but this is moving up the bar a little bit higher. Realizing this requires more than technology. I mean, I love technology, <laughs> as you know. I live it. But now we're talking about spaces that are way beyond technology, stuff I know less about. But some of you know a lot about it. It's going to require leadership by you and your colleagues. This isn't sort of like the big boys on top or big girls on top. It means leadership where you're at and strategy and a kind of culture of collaboration. My sense is this is going to be, this is going to be essential if we're going to realize this vision of building, building a geospatially enabled nation. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.